after Homo erectus comes a lot of stuff we don't understand. Now let's talk about middle Pleistocene Homo, or what I like to call it, the muddle in the middle. So we are talking about right here, um, so kind of the later end of Homo erectus. Um, there's a couple different names that people propose for what might be running around at this time, but the most common name you'll run across is Homo heidelbergensis. So starting at about 1.2 million years ago to about 200,000 years ago, we see something that looks a little bit like this. So we still have those kind of low, long, low cranium, looks a little bit like a football, um, but look at those big honking brow ridges. Oh my goodness. Now we also kind of have these like inflated cheekbones here. Um, the other name you might hear um, thrown around is archaic homo sapiens. I'm not a fan of this term, but if you hear that, that's what they're referring to. Um, and also notice we still have a little bit of this occipital torus right there at the back. So we see home Heidelbergensis in a couple different places. So here we have Bodo in Ethiopia, Kabwe in Zambia, but we also have several different people running around in Europe. So here we have Aurora from Portugal, Heidelberg in Germany, Petrolona in Greece, and Sinaim in Germany. Just looking at these guys alone from Europe, we have a couple different shapes going on. Look at the cranium between Petrolona and Greece, or sorry, Petrolona and Sinaim. Um, Sinaim's kind of a longer, I'm not quite sure what's going on with uh, right behind the orbits there. That looks a little funny. Um, and we, Aurora has kind of a more sharp occipital uh, torus there in the back. Um, we also have some of these individuals in China as well. So here we have Junu Xian and Dali. So we have a lot of different forms all over the world because we just looked at Europe, uh, China, and Africa, and we they're all a little bit different. Um, and because we have so many different forms running around when you don't really know what's happening, Homo heidelbergensis, it's a wastebasket taxon. We are all calling them the same name because they're living at about the same time. They have some similarities, but we're not entirely sure what's going on. So we're lumping them together because they fit well enough and we don't have a better answer. So hopefully in the future, someone will have a slightly better explanation for exactly what's going on in the middle Pleistocene. One thing we do know is they did we did start to see a slightly more sophisticated stone tool technique starting around 500,000 years ago. This is the Middle Paleolithic technology. And now we're seeing the Laval wall technique or a prepared core technique. So here you have your rock. You very carefully nap all around the edges. You're preparing it and then you make one big thump um, at the end and then your, your little flake just pops right off with all of the prepared edges already made. Um, so this requires, you know, thought, forethought to be able to plan that. You also need to have the motor control to carry that out. Um, and that's why this is a little bit more sophisticated than what we're seeing before. Um, however, recently there's a couple of sites in Spain that have been especially interesting. So let's take a trip and look at Ataporica. Autoporic is fun because we have a couple different sites all really close together, but at slightly different points in time, so giving us um, uh, you know, different slices at the same place. So we have Cima del Elefante at 1.2 million years ago, Grandolina at 800,000 years ago, and lastly, Cima de los Huesos at 400,000 years ago. So let's look at these one at a time. Um, so named for the earliest one at Cima de Elefante, we have something that's been named Homo antecessor. So this is a relatively newish species. Um, and here we have some Homo antecessor at Grandolina. So here we have, uh, you know, at least um, 80 bones, um, approximately six individuals. So we have some teeth, we have some cranium, but we also have postcranium, ribs, some um, feet here. But when you look carefully at some of these bones, we are seeing butchery marks. We're seeing stone tool marks on human bones. Hmm, what do you think that means? Here's one artist's rendition of what might have been happening at Grandolina. So we are seeing stone tool marks on human bones and that could be indicative of cannibalism. Um, keep in mind, it doesn't necessarily have to mean cannibalism. It could be a form of ritual burial, especially when we actually research cannibalism and find that 
people just aren't that nutritious. So sure, it is possible that cannibalism was occurring, but it is not the best way to get the nutrition that you need. If you want to get that nutrition, choose the mammoth. It's much, um, there's a lot more energy stored in there. And that's probably why they don't exist anymore. We ate them all. But let's look at our next one. Let's look at Cima de los Huesos. Um, this one means pit of bones in Spanish. Um, so this is the youngest site here at Etapurica. Um, and we have, you know, several really beautiful cranium. Um, and these are uh, sometimes called incipient Neanderthals. They are almost Neanderthals, but they're lacking some of the classic Neanderthal traits. Um, so some people want to call them Homo antecessors. Some people want to call them Homo hydrobagensis. And some people just want to lump them in with um, the Neanderthals. Lots of different opinions here. Um, Cima de los Huesos, this is um, similar in some ways to the South African cave sites where you have, kind of have these like death traps where there's just this long shafts leading into this literal pit of bones. Um, so some people want to be like, oh, this is ritual burial. They were throwing these bodies down these shafts. Um, but it's also possible that it was just a lot of accidental deaths because if you fall into one of these, you're going to have a hard time getting out without some help or some tools. Um, so also we we're seeing some evidence of butchery. So on human bones, we're seeing um, stone tool percussion and cut marks. So possibility for cannibalism. But remember, it is hard to say. Um, whenever you see these headlines, they are very sensationalized because it, it, it sells. So make sure you, you take all of these with a grain of salt. Um, so here we can look at um, the different species that are running around at this period in time. So we still have some um, late surviving Homo erectus at Zhou Kodian and Hexian in China. Um, and we have, you know, we're overlapping with the very earliest um, Homo sapiens in Africa. Um, and we do have Neanderthals running around in Europe, um, kind of at the end of this. And then we have, you know, Homo heidelbergensis or maybe other names running around at this time as well. Um, so when we're talking about um, what's going on in the Middle Pleistocene, there's a couple different species you'll hear talked about. Um, Homo heidelbergensis is pretty um, commonly talked about, though some people also want to say the African material is a different species and call that Homo rhodesiensis. Uh, but, you know, people debate on who is actually more uh, related to each other. Um, and then for the uh, material in Spain, um, people are trying to Bring, uh, call this Homo antecessor. I'm not particularly in love with the uh, the idea of the species, and some people want um, want to say it's the uh, co last common ancestor between Neanderthals and modern humans. That I don't particularly buy because there's no reason for our ancestors to go to Europe and then come back to Africa because it's pretty clear the very earliest Homo um, Homo sapiens are in Africa. Um, but really. It's kind of a mess in the middle place to see. We're not entirely sure what's going on. So can you explain? What are the possible hominin species running around in the middle place to see?